Okay, we have Northwestern student athletes up on the podium. We have grad guard Boo Booey. We have junior guard Brooks Barnheiser. We'll take questions for them. We got them for about 17 more minutes. Then we'll have Coach Collins from 155 to 215. The Northwestern locker room also is open. So if we don't get it to everything here, you can still get these guys at the locker room. So we'll go right into questions. If you have one, just raise your hand. We'll get a microphone. We have one on each side. We'll get it to you. We're going to start here. Right in front of me, row two. Yeah, you share a wall, Darius Northwestern. Either, I guess for either of you, having beaten a number one team in Purdue in back-to-back -back seasons, how does that help prepare you for another kind of matchup against a number one team in Connecticut tomorrow? Why don't we start with Boo, and then we'll go to Brooks. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, uh, I think it's just great preparation. Uh, we've played against great teams all year long. Uh, so, I mean, playing against the number one is, is just – like you said, you know, we, we played against the number one before, so it's kind of a been there, done that, uh, done that mentality. Uh, obviously, they're a great team, so we're going to have to just be dialed, dialed in and locked in from the jump for all 40 minutes. Uh, but it gives us great confidence, you know, uh, because we've done it before, we, we've seen it, and, you know, we all believe in ourselves a bunch, so. Yeah, I think the league that we play in, um, and kind of like you said, just having uh, playing, um, you know, really good teams like that, uh, it definitely helps. And I think that uh, the Big Ten is super physical, and UConn is also super physical. So we're definitely, uh, you know, been battle tested in terms of playing really good teams and playing, you know, some of the top teams in the country. So I think that, you know, we've seen that we've done it before. It kind of gives us a little motivation that, to know that, you know, we're able to be in this game and, you know, we're confident in going into the game. So it's definitely a really good opportunity just for us to play, you know, the number one overall seed in the tournament. So it's a blessing. We're going to go to the other side of the room. Yep. Uh, Matt Shelton, Wildcat Report. For Boo, just coming off a game against John L. Davis. Now you're playing Tristan Newton. You've called yourself the best point guard in the country. Do you relish these opportunities to go up against some of the country's other best players in your position? I mean, yeah, I, I, I'm, a, I'm a competitor, so, you know, I'm just, you know, I'm, but I'm going out there for the, for the team. You know, that's the only thing I'm thinking about is, is the team and winning. Uh, nothing personal, you know, in between anyone or accolades like that. Uh, you know, I'm just trying to go out there <clears throat> be, and be most prepared for myself and, and for my teammates and have my teammates prepared for the game. Uh, yeah, so I'm not, I'm not getting into any one-on-one -on -one matchups or anything like that. You know, I'm just going to go out there and try to win the game. We'll stay on that same row on the aisle. Go ahead. Uh, Louis Vicaire, Wildcat Report. Uh, Brooks, we saw the uh, Buffalo Wild Wings ad last night. I just wonder, how did that come about? Who contacted who? I assume it's an NIL deal. And what's your flavor? Yeah, so uh, we actually have a, a really good uh, program like True and You that kind of helps us uh, navigate all NIL stuff like with uh, within our team and for Northwestern. And really it was just uh, um, our guy that works with our team just put me in a group chat with a guy from Buffalo Wild Wings, and he was like, hey, there's this opportunity if you want it. And I thought it was kind of cool. I thought it was kind of funny because uh, it had to happen really fast because they want to get it out there. So I don't know if you saw, but the pictures were not very great quality or anything like that. But yeah, it was just kind of cool. And uh, I'm kind of a dry rub guy, not really into like a lot of sauces. So kind of a basic guy, but it was a really cool opportunity. And it was cool to you know have that uh, possibility. We'll stay on the same side in row one. Just raise your hand real quick so the guys know which one. Yep, go ahead, raise your hand so they, just see, so they know where oh. they're looking. Uh, Bill, Cam Spencer at Rutgers last year had a big game against you the first time you met. Not, not as much the second time, but what, uh, what do you remember from him uh, as a player, and what are you guys going to do you know, tomorrow to kind of keep him in check? Yeah, uh, Cam is, is a really good player. You know, he shoots it very well. You know, he can put it on the floor. Uh, you know, but I, like you said, I played against him before, uh, so <clears throat> I kind of got some... Uh, familiarness with him. Uh, I know his older brother. I play with his older brother, Pat. Uh, so, you know, we're, we're, uh, I'm kind of close with Pat. So, <clears throat> I mean, we're, we're just going to have to be dialed in on him, you know, try to limit him from getting, getting to where he wants to get and uh, take away some of his actions that he likes to get to. We're going to come to this side of the room on the aisle. Yep, go ahead, row four. Uh, for both of the guys, uh, how much did winning those overtime games against Purdue and Illinois help you last night when you're down two with ten, less than 10 seconds and then you got to go overtime again. Start with Brooks and then we'll go to Boo. Yeah, I think um, just uh, being in that moment, especially, you know, throughout the season, because I think we played five or a uh, number of um, overtime games. And like you said, against Purdue and Illinois, really good opponents, just like Florida Atlantic was. So it was really just kind of, you know, staying calm and, you know, uh, just being tough, you know, I think in, uh, in the timeout, we kind of all looked at each other and we were like, you know, we can't lose this game and we're not going to lose this game. And uh, we kind of, you know, told each other that, like, we win close games. 
So uh, it definitely gives us confidence just being in that situation before. And, uh, you know, we were kind of able to just be ourselves and kind of, you know, take it to another level once we got in that situation. Um, and I think a lot of that comes from being in those situations previously. Boo? Yeah, I mean, Brooks pretty much nailed it on the head. Uh, you know, obviously, when you get into close games and in our conference, you know, it's close games every, every basically every game, every single year. Uh, and, and usually the better teams are the ones who are able to, you know, come out on top in those last four minutes or, you know, when it matters most. And, you know, we just did a, a great job all year, like you guys said, of just being able to finish out those games. So yesterday going, uh, going into overtime, like Brooks said, man, everybody in the lock, uh, in a uh, huddle from, from the coaches to all the way down to, you know, GAs and managers, you know, everyone's just screaming like we're going to win. You know, we, got, we just believe in each other, and you know, th this is what we what we uh, we are made for, and this is what we're built to do. We're going to stay on the same side in row three. Just just raise your hand real quick. Go ahead. Yeah, for Boo, for for those of us who can't quite imagine taking some of the long range shots you do, uh, could you maybe walk us through like how you pick those spots versus how you maybe measure like eh, maybe that one's a little too crazy. Like, how do you what's your shot selection thought process like during the game? Yeah, I mean. Uh, I don't really know. I mean, I'm just pretty much thinking about it. like if you, if you go, leave me open, I'm gonna shoot it. Uh, but if I'm too far, then I probably won't shoot it. It depends also if I've hit a couple or not. Uh, because if I hit a couple, I might I'm liable to shoot it from anywhere. But uh, I don't know. My good my teammates do a good job of getting me open. And uh, if if a defender decides to go under or he's a little bit behind and I have space, uh, I'll try to shoot it. But if not, you know, I just pass it to him pass it to someone else. We'll stay on this side. We'll go to the aisle on row two. Iggy Dowling inside and you. Brooks, against two bigs like Golden and then now with Donovan Kling and Namaro, two guys over seven feet. Um, you're a guy that loves to operate in the post and get to that little eight-footer. Like, how do you get to that spot when you have a big really trying to deny that area? Yeah, it's just kind of uh, knowing where the big is. Um, and just kind of reading the situation, I remember there was a play yesterday where uh, I was taking my time and uh, backing down whoever was guarding me. And then I saw um, Golden kind of come up. And our big Luke did a good job of like kind of getting to the short, uh, like the dunker spot on the other side. So it's really just going to be trying to read situations like that, seeing if he's coming up, seeing if I'll be able to get to a fadeaway, or seeing you know if they try to force baseline to a big. Not really sure, but uh, it's definitely just going to have to be you know making reads, and we always kind of practice that during uh, just practice and simulations that we try to you know incorporate is all just like making a read and making the right play, and that's hopefully what we'll be able to do tomorrow. Back to the other side of the room in row three. I don't know if you guys necessarily pay attention to this, but you're one of the heavier underdogs in the second round against UConn. You're also heavy underdogs against UCLA last season, but played a very close game. How does that second round experience from last year help you in another game where, again, you're not favored? Start with Boo, and then we'll go to Brooks. Uh, you could just call us the underdogs. I, I've been here five years. I don't remember a time when we weren't the underdogs. So, I mean, it's nothing new. Uh, we're just going to come out, you know, we're the underdogs. Brooks? Yeah, I think, um, uh, especially for me, just playing in a second round game last year, it was really my first, you know, tournament experience. And um, kind of like Boo said, like, we know that once we get deeper and deeper into March, we're probably going to be an even more and more underdog. Uh, so, you know, it really doesn't, I mean, it's all kind of, you know, just fun and games with us because, uh, like, we kind of like Boo said, we've always been the underdog. But uh, being there last year and kind of, Realizing that, um, you know, we've been here before is definitely going to be a really good feeling going into the game. Just to know that, like, you know, this isn't, you know, uh, uncommon ground anymore. Any more questions for, we'll come here on this side in row one. Gavin Key from the London Days for Boo. I see you grew up in Albany, or did you grow up there? Is that, and did you, and so you went to Gould Academy in Maine, is that correct? Yeah, I was born and raised in Albany, okay. uh, and then I'm and then I went to Gould Academy in Maine. I reclassed my junior year of high school, and I did two years at Gould Academy. Did you ever have any connections with Andre Jackson? He went to Albany Academy. Did you? Have yeah, seen I mean Andre Jackson. I grew up with him. Uh, he's like a brother to me. Uh, you know, literally since the second grade, we've we've grown up and and been hanging out with each other ever since. And now he's actually in Milwaukee, and I go up about an hour and fifteen minutes. 
and I go up, uh, you know, like once every other weekend or so, you know, catch a game if I can or, or just go chill with him, say what's up. Has he reached out to you, you knowing you're playing UConn now? To yeah, I mean, he, re he reached out to me uh, before the tournament had started, and he was like, you know, uh, you got to be FAU so I can get past and try to make it to the UConn game. So I know that he told me he was going to try to be at the game. Uh, hopefully he can make it. Uh, I'm not sure with, with his schedule, but uh, he definitely had mentioned mentioned that to me before. Any more questions? Okay, we'll come to this side. We're in row two. Bradley Locker inside on you. Boo, you've guarded a litany of really good guards this year in the Big Ten, and now John L. Davis in the first round. What kind of makes Tristan Newton especially difficult, and what kind of distinguishes this game in your opinion? Uh, you know, Tristan Newton is, is a good point guard, you know, obviously uh, All-American. All and, uh, you know, I think that he has a good size. Uh, but, you know, we're just – I've played against a lot of, you know, great players, great point guards. So, you know, it's, we're just going to – I'm going to have to come out, take the challenge, and, you know, we're, we're going to see. We'll go to the other side of the room on the end, row three. Yep. Hey, guys, Annie from the Chicago Sun-Times. Um, last year – against UCLA, you guys stayed poised throughout that game, came back, and then ultimately, obviously, we know it, it didn't end the way you wanted it to. But I'm curious how that experience against UCLA um, can maybe benefit you guys now going into this game against um, UConn. Do Brooks first and then Boo. Yeah, uh, I think, um, kind of like I said previously, but uh, just the fact that, you know, we've been there in back-to-back uh, -back years, uh, getting there, it's not really on common ground for the program anymore. And it kind of gives, you know, everybody a sense of confidence going into, you know, like um, the fact that we've been there and just the fact that we didn't get it done last year. Um, and uh, Boo had kind of already hit on it. Like, we know that we're a big underdog, but uh, that kind of just makes us, you know, even more confident. You know, we don't really have anything to lose because, you know, we always have been the underdog. So uh, it's definitely, definitely gives us a little experience going into the game. And Boo? <laughs> yeah, I mean, there ain't much more I could add to that. Uh, Brooks said it. You know, I, I think that loss, you know, in the second round to the to UCLA is definitely giving us a more determined, uh, more determined mentality. Go, you know, going into this second round as well. Do we have any more questions for the student athletes? Okay, you guys are excited.